Hey, hello, my name is Penn Ward. Kent Osborne. Rebecca Sugar. Adam Muto. Jesse Moynihan. Tom Herbick. Big hand. Last episode. Incendium. Yeah. New character. New character. Cliffhanger. We have to be cliffhanger. I guess we, we ended the last season with sort of a cliffhanger with Too Young, but this is almost... But doesn't this one end and you don't know that it's a cliffhanger? Yeah, it's just kind of left as a moment that... It's not really a cliffhanger. So, my you find out later it was a cliff <laughs> and, you were, and you were hanging on. <laughs> Retroactive cliffhanger. Why is she testing fireworks during the day? Huh? She's testing, it's cloud seeding. Right. You ask a simple question, you get a simple answer. <laughs> simple man. Hey, it's hungry. <clears throat> cloud seeding, that was a technology developed in the uh, 70s. Ben. No. How, how effective is it on, in real life? Ben. I don't know. It's like, uh, or, or going energy, right? Look, oh, if that's the case, then not, not very. <laughs> <laughs> but hers works, because look. Slightly darker. It's letting up. Oh, am I thinking of cloud uh, busting? Yeah. Cloud <clears throat> seeding makes it rain for the farmers. Yeah. But I don't know how effective that is either. Another great Rebecca Sugar song. A <laughs> big wad clutching it. <laughs> I'm trying to put a lot of really gut red thing imagery into the top of this one when they're on the roof and. Every move I make is just another mistake. I wonder what you think he stole those photographs yeah, of Princess Bubblegum? Yeah, I and mean, why does she have those? They look like headshots. Why does she? <laughs> She's kind of vain. She might have headshots so to she hand like, out. She arranged for a photo session just to like. She's a head of state. You get portraitures. Mm. And that's the wad from Eat the Spaghetti, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Though that was not the title, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the moment. <laughs> that wasn't the name of that episode? <laughs> no. <laughs> the spaghetti. It was to cut a woman's hair. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good title, too, Princess, though. eat the spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, we'll call it that. Okay. Return of Jake's backpack. Time to make that episode. Walk in oh, yeah. the woods. There's a cool backpack. Some booties. Bimo, you look after it's him weird that they cut off there. If Never noticed that. Hurt, yeah. This one... Okay, you, you and I wrote this one together, and you really wanted to do uh, a Jake and Boots going off, you know, to help Finn's oh, yeah. problem story. And I really wanted to make Finn cry. Yeah. So between the, the two of us, we did those things. Oh, that's right. It was like a Puss in Boots thing. Is that what's with the boots? Is it, is it just like a. Yeah, Puss in Boots. Is it? Yeah. This is a super Adam y thing here. What are these, these like metal birds? These are like iron owls. Iron owls. And they, they kind of look like. <laughs> <laughs> and you took that, that cool move in, which is kind of like my favorite anime. Yes, that was a shout out to Rebecca because she got me into this anime. And I, now I'm actually more caught up on it than she is yeah. somehow. That's oh man, I want to watch that. I can't I say it. <laughs> Single portion. I know just the skirt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Okay, so a lot of the this stuff is so awesome. This go shrimp background. I, I was really uh, surprised when this came back and the spell turned Jake bright blue, and it had a really cool, beautiful effect. Where'd you get the spell incantation from? I think Tom actually. Tom yeah, Kenny. I was right about to take credit for that, and I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Tom Kenny. <laughs> on the tip, tip of his Tom's tongue all the time. <laughs> kind of ad-libbed it. Hmm. Thank you very much. Trying to be polite. Firewolves. So this episode, we kind of pitched it because we didn't want to keep writing episodes where Bubblegum shot down Finn's romantic hopes, because there are only so many stories you can do where he's trying to impress her and try to go out with her. And... I don't know. Man. It felt like we had kind of put the nail in that coffin after a couple episodes after Too Young. Yeah. We were Jake. We were all Jake. We were like, it's time to help our buddy move on yeah. from this tragic situation. What is it you see? David. This is a super cool design that Andy Verstein did based off of Penn Sketch. Of is this the guy who can't spell? Prince? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he designed it. Most of these fire people, and they, they kind of smack of Andy. 
but know you that my daughter is a <laughs> That's not an insult. That's just a weird way to say it. I want, I want that fragrance. I want that bottle. Smack, Smack of Andy. Andy. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a drawing Natasha did that was sort of the inspiration for Flame Princess, and then we, we ended up working off that, and I was, I was kind of working on the early version of my show, and that's why she's got a big gem in her forehead. Oh, I had no idea. Oh. Rip off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what? Uh, Who's ripping off? She's uh, ripping off herself. Yeah, I <laughs> um. <laughs> This is pretty cool that you kind of did a reprise of the earlier song. Actually, like Jake is sort of ripping off Finn when he does a song. Yeah, he's trying to turn it around. Yeah. Right? Flip it on him. I was happy because you worded a song that I wrote, and so I, and I'm always weird about my own drawings, but I love your drawings, so. That, like, is, that is bizarre because you good. have. Prince one of the best draftsmen Manchester. on the show. I have to be very careful what I say in this room, but a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of love in this room. No, I, I feel pressured all the time. For to up my game. Gift, a, uh, oh, yeah. No I steal mouths from Penn. A serenade. I steal poses from Rebecca, and I steal Jake faces from Tom. When Tom first moved here to start and started working on the show we all went out and got pizza I remember the, one of the first things I said to him was like I'm, it was super awkward of a choice of thing to say but I was like I can't wait to steal drawings from you or steal you because <laughs> uh, it just happens you're just working next to people and they do something cool and you're like dang and then it just it just works its way into your stuff whether you want it to or not sometimes I'll see stuff that someone drew and it's in my art and I'm like oh time to get rid of that and really push it you know push that bad idea out of my drawing style but most of the time it's all good stuff it all it all works its way into your style when you're hanging out with other artists I think it's can't help it you all have a lot of thoughts on this I'm sure it's funny because like I think you, you always start drawing drawing a, what a, other sort of drawings you've seen that you like and then at some point it's like oh you're not supposed to do that you have to learn from scratch you have to draw from observation which you absolutely do but I feel like I overcorrected and and thought, oh, it's taboo to draw like another person, and then uh, that's ridiculous. That's the most natural thing. And you said once, that's like the, you know, that you realized that was the way to do it. You just draw other people's drawings. If you want, like, sometimes I want to do something intentional. I'm trying to actually learn, and I copy stuff. I think we all did that in high school when it wasn't. We weren't ashamed to do it. But now that we're professionals, it is shameful. Yeah. <laughs> I, or at least the gut feeling is that it's shameful. But I don't think it is. I think that's how you learn if you really want to pick up something. Well, I think working on the show has forced me to uh, draw a lot of things I never would have drawn on on my own in my own work. Or uh, you know, I would have avoided or whatever. But when you do the show, you're like, well, I have to draw this thing. Like I've never drawn it before. And then you wonder, like, well, how am I going to draw this without looking like a total amateur? And then you kind of look at your friends who can draw that stuff better than you can. And you're like, oh, that's how they do it. And then, you, you know, because you're cramped for time, you're like, well, I guess I can try doing it kind of that, that way. Or... That's how you do anything, man. <clears throat> look at what people did before. Check it out. It's not shameful. Excellent. Don't be ashamed. You have indeed proven Jesse. Yourself. Yeah, no, there's a certain amount of shame to it, though. There's a... Uh, I definitely feel shame when if I feel like I'm biting somebody, but I do it. You don't copy it, you learn it, right? And then you make it your own. You it's, it's like food, right? It's like you, you just eat one thing, you're gonna get sick. If you steal from a lot of different people and you draw from life and you, and you draw for fun and you draw for work, that's all, it's gonna be a lot of different things. And then you I'm imagining the food of me stealing from every different type of food. <laughs> like curry, pineapple, lentil. It's a gross buffet of all this stuff. <laughs> this will make me feel better than before. I don't know, there's definitely an so ego thing like where you don't want to, you don't want people to recognize that you're biting anybody and... But that you, but that, <clears throat> but that's wrong, right? Because we all, we did it. That's how we're drawing now. It's because we I sat don't... down and like copied something else. <laughs> Or you can't say all the things that we copied, but I <laughs> did copy stuff, but I don't draw the same way I used to. I know you, t you, but you learned. I think, and you made it your own thing. The thing you have yeah. to do is, is study, don't like give me that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like once you learn to look at a drawing and see it as a series of choices instead of as a drawing, then you can steal it because you understand you're stealing choices. You're not stealing drawings, right? And yeah. Can, and you can decide which choices you agreed with. <laughs> Who lit that fire? 
fire. I'll kill you. Oh, I was really, I was really excited to do this part. I really want to make Finn lose it. Really lose it. All right. You know the symbolism of him using the, uh, the bubblegum wad to aid his rescue bubble yes, was yes. important to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. He has this piece of bubblegum. It's a piece of her. It's a piece of her. Of herself. Symbolism. Uh, and Flame Princess is gonna fall, and he uses it as leverage in order to grab her. That's that's him giving up, giving up bubblegum. There it goes. He doesn't. He doesn't need her anymore. Boom. It's like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> and look how well that turned out. <laughs> What's wrong with me, huh? You don't like me. Yeah. I like you don't get a ton of Flame Princess in this episode, but. Uh... I think the idea was that she's like a less savvy version of all all the characters that Finn usually deals with. Because usually he's used to being the one who's emotionally immature. And she's the first one who's actually more clueless than he is. Well, she's been in a... Yeah, because she's been trapped her whole life. That's the only way that she would be less mature than What a me. moron. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, this was also the last episode that I worked on with Rebecca. Uh, so it's it pretty emotional. And then I just I quit. I just left. Uh, exploded. It's not true. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. See you next, next season. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, we really did it. That didn't take that long. It's kind of dead.